Magic. <laughs> Ahoy hoy, welcome to that pedal show, Dan here. Mick here, hello. Right, so, these are the last two shows. I know we've been saying this for a few <laughs> weeks. But uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we're moving premises. And um, that process has taken a little bit longer than, than you know... Leases, contracts, all of those kind of really boring things. Anyway, so we're finally moving in. We are. It, we're recording this on a Tuesday night. It mm -hmm. is. Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday talks uh, to our friend Mary Spender. Um, it's seven minutes to eight on a Tuesday night. Daniel, cheers. Oh, Michael, cheers to you, good sir. Two more videos. And that's, and then that's the end of that pedal shed. Wow. Simon, we have a, we have a libation. With which, and, and this is the penultimate video that we're going to do. So we said, right, okay, let's let's make ourselves a challenge. And that challenge, Daniel, was? We were allowed one guitar, one amp, and one pedal type thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to stretch my pedal a bit. It's hard. It's really tough. So I, I really bet, tough. so, uh, okay, so what have you chosen? You've chosen... Okay, I have my AC30 um, using the power station. That's two amps. That is... It's not, it's my AC30, and um, I've chosen the RE201 Space Echo. So we... Uh, it we... fits on a board, it's a pedal. It is a pedal. And loads of people use them for years and still do use them. So, um, I, don't expect, I don't expect for a second you'll be watching, but hello to my friend uh, Irvin Feld, who I met in Norway. Right. Hi, Irvin. And... Uh, before I knew Dan, Irvin's this really cool dude. You know he's the G-sharp guitar? Oh, he is the coolest dude! Right, and, and... My goodness! I remember being much younger than I am now, and him saying, Meek, because that's how he speaks, because he's uh, Norwegian. Uh, I, won't, I won't do any more of that. He, he was just raving about space echoes right. in the kind of way that that you would rave about them. Right. And he was, I, th I think at the time he had a couple of PV Classic 50s and he was running wet dry and all this kind of stuff. And I was too stupid to listen to him. Because <laughs> he was, you know, really passionate. Anyway, so hello, uh, Irvin, if you're watching. Um, Can I, a quick note on Irvin. Our very first ever show that we did in 2004, yeah. and we had the big white crazy thing, Pro 14. Yeah. Was, and Irvin came over to my stand and said, I really like it. Uh, thank you very much. He says, this is what I do. And he showed me the, the, the beginnings of the G-sharp guitar. So he was doing a guitar building course. Yeah, he was yeah. taking students through, showing them how to build a guitar. Yeah. And at the end of it, they would build this, this smaller instrument. And he said, I'm going to produce these, and I want to send you one. Oh, awesome. And I still have it. He, he yeah. did it like a year later. It arrived in the post. It's fantastic. I've got one too. I've yeah, yeah, too. man. So very cool. But um, he was massively into all this stuff. Yes. Um, and, and those kind of cool organic sounds. Yeah. And we were in Germany last week, yeah. and the guys from Roland were there. You've probably already seen the video, because we've made a video about it. Um, Dan came straight back, phoned up Soundgas, and said... Well, I... So, we did that... It's really hot in here. Uh, I'm going to see if the heat... Is the heating on? I don't think so. Right, it's just my... Just going to double check. My radiant magnetism. No, it's not. Why is it so hot in here? Maybe it's excitement, Dan. It I'm very excited. There's a lot of there's a lot of valves behind us. <laughs> That's true. We've been cooking for a long time. Okay, right. Mm. Sorry, you were saying. So, I had very briefly in Australia the 201, and I thought this is the biggest hunk of junk I've ever heard in my life. It was awful. 
People kept raving about it, and I just went, nah, you know, not for me. Then when we were in Germany, plugged this thing, and it's like, it was... It's in, heavenly. It was incredible. Yep. And then um, our friend Tony Milne from yep. Soundgas yep. called and says, oh, did you like the 201? We, we sold that to Roland. In fact, they supplied Roland with all the, the space echoes. I said, oh, that's the best one I've ever heard. He says, well, we've got, we've got a few. And so I jumped in my car this morning. <laughs> I've been five hours in the car. I raced straight up there. I, sp I spent the day with Tony nice. and his that wife. Nice. <laughs> did, did, yeah. did I get... That was really nice. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Our, um, our Sennheiser MKH 416s or whatever they're called will we'll love that. Awesome. Yeah. See if you can oh. chop that out. And repeat no, it like no, I, think need, I think we need it in. All right. Um, no, I meant, you know, chop it out and then repeat it. Oh, I see. Like, you know, yeah, like, like a ringtone like from it. Yeah, so, yeah, let's do that. I raced up there this morning and I spent the most glorious three hours in Tony's studio. You've got, we have to record a show there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, seriously, when I die, I'm going to be stuffed and put in a chair <laughs> in that place with holding my telly, just surrounded by that. It's unbelievable. <laughs> And I played through a bunch of these space echoes and they're all sounding amazing. And I plugged into this one and I just went, this is it. Within three seconds, it was like, this is the one. And Tony just went, yeah, that's, that's the one. Briefly, why, why did it sound better? Um, it's so interesting. Some have more fidelity, big, you know, bottom and top. Um, which if you're using, like he does drum machine and synth stuff and, and, and through the desk, it's yeah. amazing. But for guitar, this just had a warmer... Um, what is that, input resistance or...? It's, it, look, it's it's everything. These things are so old. Yeah. And... What year is that, also, you know? also, so Tony told me, these were being made in four different factories simultaneously. Oh, uh, okay. Right? Right, 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 right. right. So... So it's, what have we got this week? Exactly. Oh, we, don't, we don't have those, let's use those. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Sure, sure, sure. So they all sound a bit different. Um, but I plugged into this one, and seriously, I sat there just playing it for an hour, and a Binson Echo Rec 2, um, <laughs> which we'll get to later. But the one of the things that, that um, I was I loved about the 201 that we had in Germany was that reverb. Mm. And this, the... All of them had a different sounding reverb, but this one had that magic, because um, it's a dark, it's a splashy, proper spring, proper spring tank. Um, so, yeah, it's an amazing device. So, if you can see this tape spooling here, we, can, we won't be able to see that. Unfortunately, there's no camera above. If you were looking at it from above, what you would see actually you wouldn't see because it's covered by a dark plate. Um, but there is tape spooling around, and if you want to see what that looks like, have a look at the video we made in Germany a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And it's one long tape loop, yeah, um, which is great. So unlike something like a copycat or an EP3, which is just one small tape loop, and the tape tends to wear out quite quickly. Yeah. Whereas this is a really long tape loop, so the tape lasts quite a while. Um, but you've got um, you've got the mode selector on the front here, so you can select between the four different tape heads. Yeah. And then you can select between. Oh, sorry, the four different tape heads. You can select between. There's uh, three tape heads and there's a different um, combinations, three combinations and with reverb. And then you can add the reverb in. And so without, which is a quick demonstration, if I um, turn the, the echo off. So when we said you can have any guitar, amp or pedal, this sort of loosely, loosely it fits into the pedal, doesn't it? You can yeah. fit it on a pedal board. You can fit it on a pedal board. Therefore, it's a pedal. Yeah. And there is a, there's a... On off foot switch somewhere? There's a foot switch somewhere for it, so that'll do. Um, <laughs> So this is, this is, ah, and the setup I've gone for, so I've gone for, I've got an, uh, a little AV baby, the AV Y foot switch here. So I'm going to two different channels, because you've got two channels in the two rock, right? Well, I'll, I'll explain <coughs> that in a minute. So no, Not actually, but. So I've gone for one slightly cleaner we channel. Get, we get asked this a lot. Can you use an AB foot switch and switch between the channels on um, like an old fashioned because, again, for anyone who doesn't know, most people will know channel switching amps where you have a clean channel and a dirty channel and you switch between them, right? Old-fashioned amps, for anyone who doesn't know, usually have completely separate channels. So you can't, there's, no, there's no function in the amp to switch between them. AC30 is a good example. Marshall Plexi is a good example. Fender, uh, 
basement, mm -hmm. lots of old fashioned amps because they had multiple channels because they were designed to have multiple things plugged into them. That's right. So you might have the vocalist, yeah. you and the keyboard player. Can you believe that? They were designed to have a mic, like the yeah. little tweed deluxe. Well, it still says it's mic. It's mic input. Yeah, or harmonica, some, sometimes they say, don't they? Wow. Yeah, so, so normal and mic. By adding, um, well, you explain. You so yeah, well, just it, the guitar goes in and you can switch between the two outputs. So I've got one channel cranked a bit more and one channel a bit cleaner. And the crank channel, and this is why I've got the power station so I can reduce it to a usable volume. And which channels are you using? So I've got the normal channel, which yep. is my sort of the really clean tone. And this is, so this isn't on at the moment. This is just. So there's no reverb, it's really dry. But then I go to the F86 channel. <laughs> so I can at least get a little bit of a love in yep. there. But now, check this out, man. So if I go, just go back to the clean channel. So this is the reverb. I've got the input gain turned right up so yeah. I, to get a bit more love. So it's really sensitive, so I wouldn't have it that high, but probably. Ah, oh, just. I've got a question. I've yes. got a question. The sibilance that I would normally expect off your guitar, right. either my ears have packed up, right. or it's there's quite a lot of top end being rolled off somewhere along the line. Okay. Like the real chimey, like the chimey nature that your guitar normally has. Right. Is that is it the tone cut on the amp, or is it? Are, are we get are we? Is there a lot of um, capacitance or resistance in all of this uh, or something? No, it shouldn't be. Um. I think, let me turn that back down. I think what it is, is because I'm actually running the app really hard. Yeah. And I've got the gas compressor power station, it's compressing. Just uh, do me a favor a sec. Yep. <laughs> hello telly hello hello there hello. we go all right so go. i'm pleased uh, what i'm quite pleased about is my ears still work dan and i've been having a discussion dan's have has some compacted wax in his ear i yeah so i had some compacted wax and then i had it cleaned out and i got an ear infection it's been just awful because I've, I've, i haven't had an issue with my ears for so long and now now I've had this just like, oh my god, I can't, you know, I'm um, I'm now hyper aware. What's been of, the cause of it, do you know? Well, it's, 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 when you get uh, this stuff cleaned out of your ears, if they, if any water gets left in there, it's often it can turn into an ear infection. Oh, uh, right. Uh, it's, it's really gross. Yeah, it's um, like being 18 months old again. It is, it is. So it's been vile and disgusting. Um, and... But I'm still here. Is it caused by the rock brought forth in this room? No. Good. It's been caused by an overzealous drummer. Ah. Actually, no. That's, no. Doug, we love no, you. No, no, we love Doug. Um, I, it was, I had compacted earwax, right? And it was so bad that right up against the right up against the eardrum. And then we had a really quiet rehearsal in there, in here one night. And then at the end, Doug went into Moby Dick at a... a, a vivacious, um, emotionally vigorous rendition of Moby Dick, and it just caught me by surprise. Oh, no way. And, and, it's, and normally it'd be fine, because, it, because the ear the ear axe was right against the eardrum, and, and that's how I knew it was sort of happening anyway. Yeah. 
Anyway, so sorry. it's all good. It's all Di good. Digression, digression. It's all good. But now, um, yeah, I'm just been I've been really sensitive to to stuff after having it done. So there it's all back, lovely. So now if I turn the the reverb back up, and you'll be able to hear the. And what I love about that, that it's like... The preamp in that's doing its own thing, isn't it? Oh, it really is. If you turn the whole thing off, will the preamp turn off as well, or only the echo? If I bypass that, the, yeah, the preamp, uh, the preamp's still part of it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So that bypasses the echo and, and everything. But now, if I just go turn the echo on... Goodness, it's hey. such a magic sound. So, uh, no surprise on the guitar. No surprise we the just guitar. literally skip straight past that. Yep. And now I'm just going to put the reverb and the echo on together. So there's that sound, right? And if I go into the the um, the driving crunching side. Honestly, I just that sound, and I had this. I had this amazing discussion with Tony today. That, that while we're there playing with these things, honestly, wait till you guys come up. It's going to blow your minds. And we tried a whole bunch of these different devices. And when you plugged into something like this or the 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 Echo Rec, the guitar went from being here to here. Just every time you turn them on, once they're set up and sounding great, and it just made everything just sound bigger and that sort of thing you're instantly connected with and certainly for me and it's one of those things that I you know we're recording with really great gear and you know it sounds great in here but until you sit down and experience that yeah, yeah. you know I've, I've said to Tony you've got to um, start doing tours <laughs> you know set set it up so people can come in and just you know pay two pounds at the door just to go and sit down for five minutes with a real echo wreck and you just you know it's such a thing to you know experiencing that sound well, every time we plug one in it's the fidelity it's the no i'm assuming it's the no adda conversion yeah. it's and the preamp is yeah. a massive part of it it's just all analog all the way through and something about that is more than the sum of its parts yeah. it feels like yeah come on let's let's hear a, let's let's hear a bit let's uh let's hear you switch through some stuff. One other quick thing, there's EQ here, bass and treble, which affects the repeats. So let me have a play. You you play, I'll I'll, I'll tweak, I'll tweak, tweak. All right.
man. It's a magic blooming noise. It is such a magic noise. It really affects me. It really does. It takes a minute, doesn't it? It takes a minute just to, it's the kind of thing where you start off playing and you know, you, you're sort of fiddling around with it and, fi and moving everything around and then all of a sudden you just stumble on a sound and then the next two hours are gone. Yeah. That's what these things do for me. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but that's, I'm assuming that's why you went for a delay rather than an overdrive pedal? I, I wanted to use the AC30 because I've been, I was tossing up between the handstead and the AC30. And the thing with the AC30, I've been using it so much lately. And I thought, um, just because it's something that I'm, I'm really enjoying that in the mix. Yeah, so yeah. I'm really enjoying the sound of that. And, and it's, it's a, it just, it's a tighter sounding thing. It's got a tighter bottom end, but it just, it sits so nicely, but it didn't have a reverb. And because I've been up there playing with this today, if it had been any other day, yeah, I yeah, might have chosen, chosen something, something else. else. Yeah, that's but always because, the way it goes. Exactly. Isn't it? But because I've been with this thing today, I'm just and it's been blowing my mind. You can hear. We should do this regularly. Oh, yes, absolutely. Because it's going to be different every day time we do it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because I thought, okay, this this has got reverb in it, where this doesn't. I thought yes, because if we do anything, you know, if we can jam or anything, I want a little bit of reverb on that's really, yeah, you know, um, and you've got, you know the rhythm and that's gorgeous. So I thought, I want a bit of that reverb. I thought, actually, this is perfect. It's a little bit of echo. I used the two channels, the EF86 and the normal channel in this. Crank the EF86 up so I've got a bit of love. Use the preamp in this, give it a bit more. And, I mean, that... Yes, arguably, I would like to be able to step on a pedal and have a little bit more drive. However, this at a gig volume, I could totally I'm gonna say for lose me, lose myself. In uh, this. Listening to it, then for most of the stuff we play, most of the time, there's enough overdrive there to be certainly to play chordy rhythm stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you're soloing and I'm doing rhythm behind you, we're golden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I guess it would be harder work were you required to do a rockier kind of solo. There's not quite enough gain for that. I would need to crank the amp up and, and you know adjust the settings on here. Yeah. To make that work. But, yeah, you know, yeah. we can do that in a bit. But, um, yeah, I've, you know, as you said, that sort of sound, that's me f for days. Yeah, yeah. It's just lost in that. It's just beautiful. That's why I have chosen a, an echo pedal as well. Okay. <laughs> because it's like, you know, typically, what would it be? It would be Strat, Tube Screamer, Super Reverb, yep. or Two Rock. Yeah. That's what it would be. That would be, if I had to go and do a gig, that's probably what I would take because... If it had to be one pedal, it would probably have to be an overdrive. Well, seeing as we weren't allowed to choose a DNM drive, yeah, we, we see? yes, we we said right from the top, no DNM drive because everyone will go, oh, you just chosen the DNM drive because it's your pedal. Yeah, so. yeah. So if I was allowed the DNM drive, I probably would have gone Hampstead. Yeah, okay. Because it's got the reverb and tremolo and everything in there. Like, okay, I can totally make this work. It's gonna oh, be great. That would have been great. But. We want oh, it. So, come on, but yeah. however, that's however, that's for another day. Isn't that's it? another day. That's another day. Yeah, 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 but yeah. for this, I can oh, fire out. You know, yeah. Who wouldn't just, you know, yeah. lose themselves in this? I thing. chose mine on the basis of sat here playing on my own. Right. Sat sat here, in, inspiring tones. Now, right. Okay. So this, no surprise whatsoever. I was thinking about trying the Collings. Did you think about anything? You I did. You thought about the Collings? Yeah, because I thought you know. Because I could play it acoustically if I could only have one guitar, mm. and I was like, no, 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 don't be silly. Because I nearly, I nearly went with Butters. Okay, but it would be a telly, right? It would, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and similarly, I can't, you know, it, it would be ludicrous to choose anything other than this, given that this is a guitar I play for ninety percent of the time. Yeah. Uh, Two Rock, classic reverb signature, obviously uh, my favourite amp ever. Uh, it's an astonishing thing. Yeah, so what I, what I want to show you today is a couple of things I probably haven't shown you before, and you guys as well, um, who, when I did the video about this amp, I didn't really explore a couple of the switching options. Right. So I'll just show you a couple of those. And I've taken a total flyer on this. Right. I've been waiting for this pedal to come out for blooming ages. Hello, Chico, if you're watching. Um, Guru's Echo Sex. When we had the original Echo Rec on, we were kind of, we were a little bit sniffy about the uh, Echo Sex, mm -hmm. the original one, because it only had the one head. 
sorry, I'm just going to turn this off for a second so I can turn that off and stop that sound. So okay, is that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two seconds. Oh, I see, and then, and then it was quiet. I'm there still, we go. Still got a fan in this. That can come off. Oh. There we go, you see? You see? It's all analog noise, it all adds to the... Uh, it does. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, we were a bit sniffy about it because it only had one head. Um, I think we'd, we'd done a cursory read of the manual. Uh, and it wasn't it, it wasn't as instantly impressive as the other Echorec types yeah. because it didn't have all the features of the other Echorec types. And they've been developing this one, which has the four heads, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I had literally never heard it before plugging it on the board today. So a bit of a flyer on that. But it was always going to be a delay pedal. Mm -hmm. Choice one would have been my uh, Free the Tone flight time. Right. But I forgot to bring it. <laughs> Sorry, Yuki, uh, but that'll that'll appear again in in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that because it does the TC twenty two ninety thing. It's super super clean. It's, that's an, path. That is an amazing and amazing it's, pedal. It's tweakable in a way that I can cope with. Like there aren't millions of menus and stuff, but it is infinitely tweakable straight off the top panel. So mm. and it sounds fantastic. So anyway, bizarrely, Dan came back from Soundgas with this today. So I'm like, right, I'm going to choose that. So I've chosen that. Anyway, so back to the two rock. Um, you know the sound of this amp. One of, sorry, go on. I was just to say, um, I mean, hearing it like this in this environment, I mean, it's just, it is the most extraordinary, it's visceral. It's so, it's and so quick. I can tell what, I can tell the angle of the pick that you're using on the strings, you know what I mean? It's so immediate. But we were in this, we were uh, with Matt Schofield last week in the studio and he had it cranked. Yeah, I lent it to Matt. He, Matt was recording his new album. And oh he, my giddy aunt. Yeah, he had it pretty, almost <laughs> wide open, albeit in the 50 watt mode. Right. And it was Oh, you can't do it in this room. No. You, you need a room that can do it. So it's it's kind of ticking over in here. It's loud enough to to feel it. Yeah. Now, one of the things one of the things about the two rock sound to me, which define it away from Blackface Fender, is that m mid push thing. Yeah. So there's a switch on the on the. Turn the reverb down a little bit, but the, I mean, th this is closer to a blackface fendery thing. When you add in the two rock mid push, as as it's lower mids as well as yeah, yeah, and it's for me, it's a it's quite a defining character of that modded blackface mm. moving on from there. Right. Funnily enough, Matt, Matt doesn't use that. He used it in the blackface setting and with the, with the mid push off and everything off, but the amp wide open. Okay. So that, that's that. But then in addition, it has um, some functions that you can see on the uh, foot switch there. One is a separate FET boost. Now I'm told that um, Mr. Dumble first included this on some of his amps. Right. Uh, notably the super famous one, um, Overdrive Special. Mm -hmm. uh, now I've read in the Dumble book, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I read it that he put it in there for acoustic guitars. Yeah, I heard that as well. So it would give you that sort of crystalline <coughs> uh, thing on an acoustic guitar. Mm. But anyway, if you use it on an electric guitar, it sounds like this. So. And then 
maxed out. <laughs> Wow. Sorry, mate. No, 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 it's all good. And then, um, in addition to that, there's an EQ lift. So what the way EQ works in most amps is that it's reductive. So you've got your signal flowing through, you put a bass pot in there and it, it cuts. And if you turn all the EQ pots up to maximum in a normal guitar amp, it bypasses the EQ. That's the straight through, yep. that's what you would be getting. This does that. Right, it just take, gets rid of the EQ stack and Cuts the EQ yeah. out, as far right. as I'm, yeah, that's my understanding. Bleakin' heck, man, that's unbelievable. <laughs> We've never heard it like that. That is room. unbelievable. And that's just, that's it, that's it, with the FET boost and it open. Now we may, we're back to using the Zoom F8 today because like a total idiot, I forgot the um, power lead for the Apollo, for the Apollo 8P. So uh, we're back to using the old Zoom. So I may well have just pushed the preamps a little bit too hard there. So if it clips a bit, my apologies. Um, so right there, right, you've got quite a lot. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and it does add a tremendous amount of level, both of those things. Yeah. Man alive. It's, it's nice, that's the it? strat sound that everyone dreams of. Yeah, and that, so that was it with the FET really pushed. If you, if I was to turn the master up, um, turn the FET gain down a bit, then you just get headroom, headroom, headroom for that huge, clean, massive thing. But mm. given that, want a bit of overdrive going on that's how we got it okay and how are you using the echo sex well it's new so well i say it's new it turned up today right um so from from our from our uh when we did the original echo rec i didn't really know much about echo rec so i've since learned that there's four heads right they've got those three modes and this this replicates all of that so here is um here's just head four which is the longest delay mm -hmm. head I'll tell you what's quite cool about this so He's really got that that d decay thing happening, hasn't he? But check check this yeah. out.
a little thing about that um, that little knob on the back. So the Echo Rex have a fixed speed generally, but you can mod them right. to put a little motor in that changes the, the speed of the motor. And that's what that does. Interestingly, when you turn it down, make it slower, there's less fidelity because there's less information going yeah, yeah. into the tape. And that does that. As you it, turn the down, you get the kind of lo-fi thing. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that, that would do me in with the, with the, an echo rec is that it's hard to get different delay times. Yeah. But here we can because yeah. you've got that. So there's, 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 um, let's go all the way back here. So head one. Um, now, I'm not sure where the motor speed adjust should be, so I've just got it roughly in the middle. Yep. Okay. So you can see as the, as you're going through the selector that is selecting different combinations of those different combinations yeah. of heads. <laughs> One thing, remind me what the difference between the echo and the rep and the swell is. Um, the swell that adds adds something akin to reverb. It's something about the the what it does with the shorter delay times. I don't know. It's really um, the people I, I I've asked about it. Don't really know. Okay. It just adds this, it's almost adds like a reverb -y thing. Well, let's see if we can hear it then. Okay. Yeah, so the echo is just one repeat. Yeah. The rep is where you get the feedback. Yeah. 
the swell. It's almost like it swells on itself. It's almost like an right. oscillation thing on the shortest head or something. Man, I gotta say, that's um, that's nice, isn't it? 
It's awesome. Is it for sale? Uh, oh no, it was crashed it. We oh, have to buy it now. Oh, no, heaven, no, heaven for fend. What a terrible shame. It's good actually. It's really so nice. I, I think I'm right in saying that the the echo and everything is created digitally. Yeah. But it has like a really lovely analog signal path otherwise, and I'm guessing it's dry through and all that, and it's mixed. Up yeah, and it's also using top. a valve in that. Oh, it must be good then. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got the, once once the once it goes through the um, DA converter, then it goes then through the valve as it would. Add a eh? Add. I do, do I? Oh man, that was awesome. That was good. That was so much one fun. One guitar, one amp, one pedal. Let's do this again. Yeah. In in limitation Let's comes do it now. some creativity, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so what have we got? We got uh, two echo units separated by, when did they come out? 70s? That, yes, that's 70s. Okay, so. 50, 40 something years. Something years. 40 something years. Wow. I th that sounds... Magic. Off the scale good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that might sound a little bit humdrum by comparison. It sounded pretty good. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's extraordinary. Mm. Well, okay, so... In the next iteration of uh, mixed pedal board, because mm. we both need to do our new boards in in celebration of moving into the new place, that is going to be my. It really should be character echo. It really should be, and I'm going to keep the free the tone for the cleaner, nicer yeah, 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 yeah. 2290 type thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but I, that that into that is a magic combo. It's great, you know, when you've been dying to hear something and something new's coming out, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm really going to like this. I'm really going to like this. Mm. And then it comes out, and you're like, "Yay! Yes, I do. Yeah, yes, I do. No, fantastic, not bad, not bad. wonderful, excellent, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, the penultimate video from penultimate that video. pedal shed. Yeah, it's... we're not quite sure what we're going to call the new place yet. It might be that pedal loft. Oh, okay. It might be that pedal barn. Pedal barn. Okay. Sounds like a um, an American linen chain. Yeah. Something barn. Or boot barn. Boot barn. Yeah. Um, excellent. Okay. Massive thank you. Actually, massive thank you this week to Tony and the guys from Soundgas for making this available. For making our lives better. Yes, definitely. Our lives have got better ever since that came into our life and at Toman. <laughs> I'm a better person. Yeah. For, for us having this. Yeah. Um, massive thank you to all of our patrons and Patreon guys thank you so much um massive thank you to everyone that's commenting on our videos it's joyous to read some of those things yeah it's really cool it is we get we get some cool ones we get some questions uh, please please just comment away ask questions say whatever you like it's yeah. it's all good we love we love uh, we love engaging with all of that stuff nick and i've turned up today wearing matching t-shirts yep and which you can uh, buy on the that pedal show store yes this is our have schwein um yes yeah, so get emotional <laughs> Really? We're, we're approaching the end of an era. Right? It's been... How many years have we been in this room? Two. Because it started off just half of this size. And this is San Simon, pre-Simon days. Yeah. And uh, look where we are. We've got a bit bigger room. <laughs> and yeah. we have a Simon. <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, it's it's... Quite, it is, it is it quite is. full on, isn't it? It is emotional. And we yeah. are about to film the last show ever from this place. So um, thank you to our preferred retailers in the United States. That's... Uh, it is Joe and the gang over <laughs> at Riff, Riff City. City Music. Riff City? Uh, it's is called Riff City Guitar, actually. Riff City Guitar, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Dan's all emotional, and I am too. Um, in the UK and Europe, it is. And it's this music. Of Guildford, Surrey. And uh, in Australia, it is. Pedal Empire. Hey, Matt, I think Matt's wife's going to labour as we speak. No way. So um, yeah, good luck, guys. Uh, and I think in the new place we should we should record this as a as a thing that we can just drop in rather than say it every week. Okay. Yeah. Do you think? Sure. Do something hilarious. I perfect. <laughs> perfect. Can we do mid video ads as well? Just yeah. like drop in from nowhere. Oh yeah. Like. Oh, we did that real clickbait stuff. I was guys, and the pedal I was using on that sound was. <laughs> Bye. <here>. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.
Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Uh, and we'll see you for the very final ever last video shot in the pedal shed. Next week. Next week. Yeah, yeah. Don't... Obviously, yes, we're moving, and so we're not stopping ever. But, you know, for here. Full on. All right, cheers, guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye.